Chapter 339 No more regrets you are listening at NovelFull.audio All Lucian's girls seem too excited to do the ceremony, even little Ko wants to plant a tree with Lucian to show her innocent feelings for him. But to make sure everyone wants that, Lucian asks them. This ceremony is something very specific of some cultures, so, if some of you don't want to do it, it's really okay. As soon as he speaks, the girls look at each other and think about it. Yet, none of them, except for Galena, who is also with the group, shows any d.e.s.i.r.e to not participate in the ceremony. Although that is a ritual generally used by couples about to get married, the offering to the nature spirit is something that everyone can do and pleases everyone as well. Lucian smiles. Then we will all do this tomorrow. Even if you are strong, you should stay together and take care when looking for materials in the forest. Dot. The girls make a strange expression, and Lucian can feel their discomfort. He thinks it's because he asked them to be together, but and quickly explains. We are very excited, and we cannot wait to start tomorrow. She speaks with a pleading expression. Her ears even fall slightly, making her request irrevocable to Lucian. But it's night, my dear, Lore speaks to Anne. Although she knows that Lucian's group is strong, she doesn't know how strong they are. L.U.S.T smiles. Even a mythical beast from the Sky Realm would have a hard time dealing with those girls while they work together. Also, Amelia and Envy will be in the bride's group, right? I'm hubby's favorite wife, don't I? Envy smiles seductively at Lucian. He cannot deny that Envy is extremely beautiful, and her expression makes him horny. Also, he understands her behavior more and more and knows that even she has no real control over her emotions, like any normal person. Still, he doesn't smile at her but makes a confused expression. Oh, really? Nobody told me about it. Envy continues to smile seductively at Lucian, but then her body turns into a cloud of gray dust when Amelia tries to kick her. Stupid Envy. Amelia speaks in an annoyed tone. Then she looks at Lucian and smiles. But she is right about something. We are certainly going to do the ceremony. Lucian's wives already expected that because it is evident that Amelia loves Lucian as a brother, man, and any other way to love someone, but Lore can't but get shocked again. B. B. But why. You are his. Lore doesn't want to question Amelia but the words come out of her mouth on their own. Amelia looks at Lore with an upset expression. She still hadn't forgiven Mama Fox for being a little rude to Lucian when they arrived. Probably Lucian would also feel that way if anyone had been rude to Amelia as both siblings are too overprotective. But before the mood gets weird, Lucian approaches Amelia and strokes her beautiful white hair lovingly. In my view, this ceremony is something that represents respect for the nature spirit and other people, so everyone can do that even without the meaning of a marriage. Everyone agrees with Lucian because they think so too. He smiles at Ko. Even little Ko wants to do it to demonstrate her familiar love, so it's normal for Amelia to do it too. Lore still seems to find that strange, mainly because of the way Lucian and Amelia touch and look at each other. But she doesn't want to meddle in their lives. Lucian smiles at her as he talks to Amelia mentally. Our relationship must be complicated for other people to understand. Or accept. Yet, it has nothing to do with others, but only ourselves, my love. Mm. Amelia responds with a sound of agreement as she hugs Lucian tightly. However, she wants everyone to know that she is also his wife, and the most important of them, of course. Then she looks at Dawn and extends her hand. You also want to do the ceremony, don't you, my friend? Dawn blushes but gets up and takes Amelia's hand while looking at Lucian. I want to do this to show my respect for you and also for the culture that was once told me to be heretical, but in fact, it looks beautiful. We are going to plant a beautiful tree, which will grow just like your new life. Lucian hugs Dawn with his other arm, and both she and Amelia enjoy his scent and warm touch for a minute. 
Dawn cannot deny that she is attracted to Lucian like any other woman, but she especially likes him because he is always very kind to her and is helping her to start her life over. Lore gets up and talks to Lucian's wives. Come with me, I have a book about rare flowers, so you know where to look for the one you want. The girls can't wait to start looking for the offerings and then follow Lore to learn more about their part. They all kiss Lucian before going with Lore, leaving only Lucian, Clovis, and Elsie in the living room. Even L.U.S.T is interested in the ceremony, but Elsie seems to be a little hesitant. Clovis notices the tense look between Lucian and Elsie. He takes his glass of wine and gives Lucian a positive signal. I want to talk more, but I have to take a nap now. Lucian nods to Clovis. Good night, father. In. Law. Good night, my good son, Clovis speaks as he leaves the living room. Lucian smiles at Elsie, and she smiles back. You look like you got a good father after all. He nods. I think so. I see. Elsie nods too. Dot. And then both are silent. Lucian wants to understand more about Elsie's character and fears to force their relationship, but she seems to want him to take the initiative. I, eh. I just. Elsie starts to speak, but she doesn't exactly know what to say or how to express her feelings. What's the problem? You can tell me anything. Lucian speaks in a gentle tone. I don't know how to proceed. This seems very surreal. Elsie bows her head. Lucian approaches her and raises her head by her chin, gently making her look at his face. I thought you wanted to do the ceremony with everyone else. I want it. Elsie exclaims. But then she looks to the side as she speaks in a hesitant tone. But is it that simple? I do the ceremony and become your wife, just like that. Isn't something missing? He see that a.r.e.s.ses her fluffy ears, now slightly downward. I see in your eyes the same spark in N's eyes. You feel like discovering new places, meeting new people, living adventures. Elsie looks at Lucian with an expectant expression as he speaks. You are already part of my family. You know about our situation and that things are dangerous in my world. Yet, if you want to come with me, you don't have to do anything else, but just say. She makes a thoughtful expression. I always thought my destiny was to follow my mother's steps. Few people know that, but my grandmother's first daughter was Lore. But while she chose a life other than to be the queen, my mother accepted that position willingly. My mom likes to take care of the clan and our people. That's her selfishness. Elsie smiles. But I also know that she would do anything for me. She is perfect as a mom and queen, and I thought I wanted to be like her one day. It seems like a good life, a noble goal. Lucian comments. Elsie pouts. But when and went to Port Green, I felt bad. First, I felt lonely, but then I also realized that I was regretful because I didn't go with her. She is embarrassed to be telling Lucian those things, but he seems like an excellent listener because she knows he is not judging her. She continues. I thought about going to Port Green after Anne, but my mom needed me. My mom didn't want to marry my dad, and she doesn't want to involve Lore in the clan matters either, so I couldn't leave her alone. But. Elsie pauses for a second and then continues while Lucian pats her head. I found Anne again, and I met you. She is so happy beside you and along with your wives. I was envious of her. Lucian kisses Elsie's head. It's okay to be jealous. You didn't hurt anyone and just wanted to be with Anne, living the same life as her. Elsie giggles. Are you encouraging me to be envious? You really are a devil. He also laughs. Seriously, we shouldn't contain our feelings while it doesn't hurt the ones we love. She nods. I understand, and. I really want it. I want not only to go with your group, next to and but. I also want to receive the love and power you give her. Elsie gets even more flushed while confessing to Lucian, and he finds her reaction very cute. 
Lucian again makes her look at him, but he shakes his head, which leaves Elsie confused. I cannot give you the same love that I give to Anne, as that is only hers. I, I understand. Elsie tries to look around to hide her sad expression. But Lucian continues to hold her by the chin and quickly explains. But I can give you a special place in my heart. I can love you in a unique way as I do with all my wives. If you want it. I want. Elsie exclaims as her eyes sparkle again. So she tries to contain her excitement while she repeats. I really want it. I want to be your wife. Lucian smiles and kisses Elsie's lips gently. She does not act passively but begins to move her lips around his animatedly. He can't deny that she looks a lot like Anne, but Elsie also has many unique characteristics, which attract Lucian a lot. Elsie quickly forgets everything that is happening around them and completely focuses on the kiss with Lucian. The taste of his lips, the smell of him, the gentle but also passionate way he kisses. She easily finds a rhythm of sync between their movements. Then he starts to hug her closer to him. Everything seems fine, but Elsie stops kissing and looks at Lucian with a thoughtful expression. Are you doing this because of Anne? Lucian quickly shakes his head. I accepted you into my family because of Anne, but I want you as my wife because I really like you and because I am very selfish and greedy. Elsie giggles. I am like that too because I want to be your wife. We are both very selfish people. He smiles and starts to kiss her again. At the same time, he puts his hand on her belly, which has cute hair that he loves so much, and begins to pass his demonic energy onto her. Elsie feels an incredibly comfortable warmth entering her body. She is thrilled to be receiving Lucian's love that way and to be making the soul connection with him. His tattoo is quickly formed in her low belly area, and she hears his voice in her mind as they continue kissing. So let's be selfish together from now on. She still needs time to learn to use mental communication, so she speaks between the hot kisses. Yes. Let's go to. My home. My bedroom. My bed. Hashtag 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 If you want to support me and read more than 150 chapters ahead, visit my Patreon. Patreon.com slash lament high ef you can also donate to my Kofi. KO.fi.com slash lament high ef any donation helps me a lot and allows me to continue writing. Chapter 340 Proud Wives of the Devil You are listening at NovelFull.audio MMM. Elsie lets out cute M.O.A.N.S. as she kisses Lucian more and more passionately. He is also increasingly enjoying the flavor of her lips. But he can't resist anymore, so he lays her on the sofa and invades her little mouth with his tongue, starting the real kiss. Elsie's tongue twitches like an excited eel around Lucian's tongue, fighting him for the lead of the kiss. Lucian finds Elsie's personality incredible, but her movements are unexpected and clumsy, so he ends up leading the kiss, as always. While his hands see Elsie's arms, shoulders, waist, and ears, her hands go from his waist to his groin. She evidently cannot wait any longer to have what she d.e.s.i.r.es since she saw him the first time. Lucian also d.e.s.i.r.es the body of the beautiful fox. Girl in his arms since he saw her, but he knows how intense their first time will be, and so he's not sure if it's best for her to have it right now. Elsie. My dear, if we continue it, I won't be able to stop until I completely eat you. Lucian speaks in her mind as they continue to kiss. She can't help but be a little jealous of Lucian as he can talk and kiss at the same time while she still doesn't know how to use mental communication. Between short breaks, where Elsie just moves her lips to the side, but without disconnecting their mouths, she speaks. So. Eat me. Now. I don't want to wait any longer. Lucian looks toward the small library where Lor is giving tips to his girls and sees and looking at them through the crack in the door and smiling. 
What about the ceremony? Lucian asks Elsie. Elsie quickly responds. I know the forest well, and I already know what flower, feather, and tree I want for our offering. So if we do it quickly, I can still go with the girls. Lucian laughs as he has a hard time keeping Elsie's hands away from his u.n.d.e.r.w.e.a. Are they really have to go to her house as she suggested, or they will end up doing it in Lore's house living room. He sends a mental message to his wives. I'll be right back. So without wasting time, Lucian picks up Elsie in the way of carrying a princess and leaves N's house. In front of the house, there is a group of people curious about Lucian's group. They don't try to peek and just stand there, waiting to see something interesting. Seeing Lucian walk out the door with Elsie in his arms is certainly something incredible. As his power grows, his demonic energy gets better and better. In other words, just seeing and being near to him is enough to make ordinary women get wet like never before. Lucian smiles at the group, made up only of women, while Elsie hides her face in his c.h.e.s.t with embarrassment. Good evening. Those fox.women get hard breathing for a few seconds, but just as Lucian appeared out of nowhere, he disappears as he flies over the fence to Elsie's house, which is next to Anne's, leaving the women on the street with just a little taste of him. After entering the living room of Elsie's house, she hugs him and starts kissing him again. Mm -mm -mm. Elsie does not stop m.o.a.ning while her body feels as good as ever. In fact, she's been tense for the past few days because she was holding back her d.e.s.i.r.e for Lucian's body and is now letting all of her feelings come out in a whirlwind of emotions. Lucian lies on the sofa on his back, and Elsie sits on top of his groin. She can feel something hard touching her wet pants, which just makes her hornier. She starts stroking his hair as they kiss. Her fingers enter between those long red strands, and it gives her an indescribable feeling. Elsie feels so good to think that she now belongs to him as well as she has a part of his heart and whole body. Lucian. M. -m, -m Lucian. Elsie starts to repeat his name between M.O.A. N.S. and kisses as her body gets warmer and warmer. Her excitement arouses his demonic energy in a way, unlike anything until now. Even L.U.S.T., who is still with the other girls next door, feels like joining them to understand what's going on. Lucian is alert as he continues to give lcp.l.e.s.u.r.e with his hands, lips, smell, and everything else he can give her. But then he feels strong energy coming from her. That energy joins his and repels Envy's energy still inside his body. As l.u.s.t returns to Lucian's soul to analyze that energy, Elsie begins to kiss Lucian more passionately. She kisses his whole face, his shoulders, his c.h.e.s.t while she is repeating his name. I'm mm, Lucian. I can. Call you my husband now, right? She asks as she smiles seductively at him. Of course you can, my dear. Lucian smiles and brings Elsie's head close to his as they begin another passionate kiss. As they kiss until they run out of breath, Elsie keeps thinking about the word husband. In the short time she was with Lucian, she easily fell in love with him. Not just because he is irresistible, but because of the way he treats his wives. Elsie experienced his loving and overprotective personality and also understood more about him with Anne, who told her everything about her relationship with Lucian. Among the many things she learned about Lucian and his wives, she discovered the pride that loving partners have for each other. She and her mother have known the pride of having an incredible leader. Elsie still admires Eve a lot, but unlike following a queen who will make them strong while they are close to her, Lucian's wives can be proud to have an amazing husband who loves them and still give them incredible power, real power, and not an aura that gives buffs. Elsie envied Lucian's wives for that. She envied the fact that they walk with their heads up beside Lucian without having to ask permission from him to speak or feel like servants, but loved partners. Again, Elsie still admires Eve a lot. She is in the mortal realm due to the high respect she has for her queen. But things with Lucian are on another level. 
he can generate L.U.S.T. envy and respect in an incredibly addictive way. And now Elsie is gaining her share of Lucian. She is becoming his beloved partner, meaning she no longer needs to be Eve's servant to continue growing stronger, and she still gets the affection of the man she is in love with. I know what's going on. L.U.S.T. exclaims in Lucian's mind and quickly explains. This is pride's demonic energy still in Elsie's body. Oh, should that be so powerful? I can feel this energy flowing from her body and mixing with mine. Lucian responds. L.U.S.T. goes on to explain. Most people affected by pride's aura are left with little vestiges of her energy after some time away from her host, but Elsie is one of Eve's most loyal and close followers, so the energy is a little stronger within her. But why is it flowing so naturally into my body? Is it like Envy's energy? Lucian thinks to himself and L.U.S.T., after all, two heads are better than one. Still, he continues to give lcp.l.e.s.u.r.e with kisses and c.a.r.e.s.s.s. They have no idea what is going on and just enjoy those wonderful feelings. L.U.S.T. continues to speak to Lucian mentally. I don't really know what's going on. For me, my energy mixed with Envy's was something new. I think you did it because it was easy to make Envy and Amelia feel pleased. They envied something, and you gave it to them, also making them be envied by others, but with pride's energy, I'm not sure how to we should deal. Lucian thinks about it and quickly says. I think I know why her energy is flowing to me like that. Pride feels superior to everyone else, and when people also believe that and respect her, she feels p.l.e.s.u.r.e, that is, everything she seeks through respect and admiration is p.l.e.s.u.r.e, and our demonic energy is only about p.l.e.s.u.r.e, of any kind and source. Yeah. You seem to understand this better than I do. L.U.S.T. responds while Lucian's words make perfect sense. It's alright, this is new for all of us. Let's keep thinking together and understand more about it. Analyze Elsie's body, please. Lucian speaks lovingly. L.U.S.T. was so focused on Lucian that she didn't notice the changes in Elsie's body. Lucian's energy is mixing with Pride's inside Elsie too, and making her stronger incredibly fast, just like the mix of Envy's and his energies. She's almost on the second layer of the mortal realm. L.U.S.T. explains to Lucian. Lucian smiles at Elsie as he starts kissing her belly, making her laugh with tickling. But mentally, he keeps talking to L.U.S.T. I can feel that she is feeling extremely well and proud of herself. I'm not sure why this sudden explosion of self.respect, but what must be making her feel so much p.l.e.s.u.r.e and pride at the same time, making our energies mix smoothly. Oh, don't you really know why she's feeling proud right now? L.U.S.T. speaks sarcastically. It's because of us, right? I just didn't think it would be so significant as to mix our energies like that. Lucian replies. L.U.S.T. speaks with a proud tone. Your troops are incredibly proud to have you as their master, let alone your wives, who are your beloved partners. It really makes sense for Pride's energy to like you. I see. Lucian thinks for a second and then comments. But when I met Eve, it was very different. L.U.S.T. also thinks about it and quickly responds. Eve was proud to be your big sis but it seems that the demonic energy didn't think you deserved its power for being her little brother, but it thinks you are now worthy for being Elsie's husband. Pride's energy looks complicated. Lucian can't help but remember Pride, the woman who left a deep impression on him. Just like herself. L.U.S.T. laughs. Lucian continues to kiss Elsie while focusing on the energies within him. He has already realized that Pride's energy is accepting his original energy but repelling envies, which is not a good thing. 
he remembers the words of the mysterious woman in his dream about gathering the power of all the sins. L.U.S.T also thinks that it is the best way to make his family stronger than anyone in the universe. I'm going to try to mix pride's energy with my energy mixed with envies. Lucian talks to L.U.S.T while trying that. It's working. L.U.S.T exclaims happily again as she realizes that Lucian is managing to make pride's energy accept envies while mixed with his. Both white and gray energies are revolving around the purple energy, both seeking PLASURE. Lucian is happy as he feels his power increasing significantly. And, of course, he quickly tries to pass the new energy mix to his new wife. Mm -hmm. Dot. Elsie loudly m.o.a.ns as she feels an incredibly powerful and pleasurable feeling come up inside her, making her feel even better. She looks him in the eye and sees him smiling at her. Elsie doesn't need to understand what's going on to know that it is because of Lucian. He's giving her love, p.l.e.s.u.r.e, power, anything and everything else she wants. How can I not love you even more? She thinks to herself as she tears her own blouse, revealing her beautiful Brie A.S.T.S. to him. Then she starts to kiss him passionately while feeling more and more proud to have chosen him as her husband, quickly consuming the little energy from pride that was still in her body. We will have to find pride soon in order to maintain this new mix of energies. Lucian comments to L.U.S.T. as he feels the energy mix being quickly transformed into power for him and Elsie. Are you missing Eve or Pride the most? L.U.S.T asks in a strange tone. Are you jealous? How cute. Lucian replies. Someone called me. Lucian and L.U.S. T hear Envy's voice inside his soul. Hashtag 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 If you want to support me and read more than 150 chapters ahead, visit my Patreon. Patreon.com slash lament if you can also donate to my Kofi. KO.FI.com slash lament if any donation helps me a lot and allows me to continue writing. Chapter 341 Exotic Bath, R.1.8, you are listening at NovelFull.audio. No, nobody called you. L.U.S.T speaks to Envy in an annoyed tone. Although they do not have a physical body within Lucian's soul, it is still as if they are sharing a room within him. Don't fight. Lucian asks in a loving but firm tone. If Envy had a body now, she would be pouting while she complains. I know that whenever you have a CX with other women, L.U.S.T also participates in it even if just for a while. I want that too. Envy with jealousy. Well, the problem is that this feeling makes her strong, so Lucian knows that giving in to her will make her and Amelia stronger, just like him as well. Lucian continues to give p.l.e.s.u.r.e to Elsie as she starts to rip his shirt, and he responds to Envy. This moment must be special for Elsie, and next, we will focus on the offering, so we really don't have time for this right now. Are you saying you don't have time for LUST? Envy mocks. That is not true, right? You always have time for her. You said it right, he always has time for me. L.U.S.T speaks in a proud tone. She is still the first wife. Envy prepares to start arguing with L.U.S.T, but Lucian doesn't want that. He cannot let his wives fight even when they are ancient demon sisters. Okay, just don't disturb me while I please Elsie, and then when she needs a break, I will take care of you, both of you. Lucian speaks to Envy and L.U.S.T. Although L.U.S.T does not want to share Lucian's attention with Envy, and Envy wants to demand more attention from him, they both understand that if they upset him, they will be the only ones punished with no fun, so they quickly agree to be silent. Lucian focuses entirely on Elsie. He can feel that the mix of white, gray, and purple energies within her is almost gone, being totally transformed into real power for her. 
the same mix inside him is almost without any white part as he can only feed it with the energy of envy inside him and his original energy. And although the separate demonic energies are inferior to them together, Lucian wants to give Elsie a lot of his energy. He wants to empower and make her happy, while he also receives the same. P.L.E.S.U.R.E is the main way he and his family get stronger, but as ex and any other act of affection still have other meanings for them. M.M. LCM.O.A.N.S. with passion as she runs her hands on Lucian's B.A.R.E.C.H.N.S.T. and moves her H.I.P.N.S. over his groin. He can feel the wetness of her P.A.N.T.I.E.S. reaching his U.N.D.R.W.R. His C.O.C.K. quickly recognizes the characteristic sense of a fox girl's love juices. She brings her mouth close to his ear and whispers as she strokes his C.O.C.K. over his UNDRWR, now you're only mine. Lucian runs his fingers gently between her hair and brings her mouth up to his to start a passionate kiss while he talks to her mentally. And you're only mine. So, let's enjoy this moment. They kiss until Elsie needs to breathe, and then at that moment, Lucien rotates their bodies, laying her on her back on the sofa. Damn S-E-X-Y. She says as she licks her own lips, looking at Lucien's body in front of her. Both her upper and lower lips get wet. Lucien finishes taking off his torn shirt and tosses it on the floor before taking off his pants and boots, remaining only in his underpants, which is nowhere near able to hide his excited dragon. While gazing at the tent made by Lucian's U.N.D.E.R.W.E.R., Elsie instinctively moves her hands to her panties. She has already masturbated sometimes thinking about Lucian, and he knows it. But Lucian acts quickly and takes her hand. Elsie makes a confused expression, and he smiles as he explains. From now on, this is my job. Elsie smiles and pulls her hands back letting Lucian do whatever he wants with her body. She even opens her legs, inviting him eagerly. He kneels in front of the sofa and starts to see s her legs. Like Anne, Elsie has several parts of her body covered with a thin layer of fluffy fur, which is always very well clean and good smelling. After s sing her waist, Lucian runs down his hands and slowly takes off Elsie's boots and pants. He focuses on every detail of her body, which gets uniquely recorded in his mind and so he can perfectly describe the body of all his wives and their differences. Elsie keeps smiling as she is enchanted by the gentle way Lucian is treating her. She is very enthusiastic for him to touch her most private part, but on the other hand, she also wanted to have more layers of clothing covering her body just for him to take them off like that. You are so beautiful, my dear, Lucian speaks while kissing Elsie's th.h.i.g.hs. She gives him a perfect smile because she feels perfect now. Any fear or worry that he was doing it just out of pity for her or because and was gone when she heard him say, my dear, in such an affectionate tone. Lucian wastes no time and starts to see her wet panties. He runs his hands over it, and then underneath it, he see that a.r.e.s.ses the inner parts of her t.h.i.g.hs, getting closer and closer to that magical spot. Elsie gets hornier and hornier and starts producing even more love juices. Then Lucian begins to slowly remove her p.a.n.t.i.e.s, revealing her beautiful pink flower. His eyes sparkle with expectation as he feels that lovely perfume flow freely into his nose. He kisses her p.a.n.t.i.e.s and keeps it in his storage ring while smiling at Elsie. Your natural perfume drives me crazy since we first meet. Dot. Elsie wants to return compliments to him, but she is embarrassed while her heart is beating faster and faster. He slowly approaches his face to Elsie's most private part. First, he smells this deeply to the content of his heart, then, he starts to gently lick that shiny liquid flowing from her in large quantities. More sour than sweet. if.u.c.k.i.n.g love it. Lucian speaks in Elsie's mind as he licks her love juices. 
Amun, ah, dot. She gets even more flushed as she lets out cute M. O. A. N. S., a perfect melody for the feast that Lucian is about to have when devouring her delicious P.U.S.S.Y. Lucian looks into Elsie's eyes and alluringly smiles. I will take good care of this pot of honey so tasty. Time seems to slow down as Elsie focuses on enjoying every second, or rather, every millisecond of that incredible sensation that is having Lucian L.C.K.N.G her P.U.S.S.Y. He keeps using his hand to see that it are dot that s that s her legs, t dot h that i dot g dot h s, and waist while l that i dot c dot k that i dot n dot g her all over her pink flower. Ah dot ah, m m. Lsim dot o dot a dot n s louder and louder as the feeling gets even better. Lucian starts to stick the tip of his tongue inside her pink cave and then eagerly sucks on her lovely c dot l dot i dot t s. Just his C.A.R.S.S.E.S. have already driven her crazy, so the incredible P.L.E.S.U.R.D.E. Lucian is giving Elsie now quickly makes her want to come. She tries to contain her O.R.G.A.S.M.S. to enjoy more of that, but her body begins to convulse in P.L.A.S.U.R.E. She holds Lucian's head with both hands for fear of flying away. Lucian feels Elsie's p.u.s.s.y giving him more and more love juices, but he doesn't reduce his c.a.r.e.s.s.s. He holds tight to her t.h.i.g.h.s and lifts her up. She keeps holding on to his head, so she doesn't get out of balance. Ah! I'm coming, Lucian. Elsie wildly m.o.a.n.s while wraps her legs around his neck. Lucian spins around the room as he sucks on Elsie's p.u.s.s.y more and more intensely, drinking every drop of her precious love juice. Ah! Hubby! Elsie feels her mind go blank while all that matters is Lucian's hands holding her and his tongue devouring her p.u.s.s.y. She lets all her love flow through that o.r.g.s.m, squirting a lot of love juices on Lucian like an endless waterfall. Oh, dear! Lucian is surprised by that incredible amount of liquids. He can't drink it all, and her love juices start to run down his body. Having all that fragrant liquid running down his body makes Lucian even hornier. When Elsie's love's juices arrive in his u.n.d.e.r.w.e.r, his d.i.c.k gets even harder, like an obsidian spear, ready to pierce the skies. L.U.S.T and Envy inside Lucian's soul, make mental notes while feeling very jealous of Elsie for making Lucian so hard so quickly. He holds Elsie in that position for a minute until she regains consciousness. Still panting, she looks at him covered with liquids and gets embarrassed. Yet, a part of her is also proud to mark her man with her fluids and smell. Oops. I think I drank too much apple wine. Elsie speaks with a wide, bright smile on her gorgeous face. Lucian's heartbeats are in sync with the throbbing of his C.O.C.K. Elsie is really cute. I can't wait to f.u.c.k.u, my love. She kisses him passionately before pointing to the second bedroom in the corridor of her small house. Let's go to my bedroom. I can't wait any longer to have your c.o.c.k inside me. Wasting no time, he takes her into her bedroom, still holding her by the t.h.i.g.h.s as they kiss. Elsie's small, flexible body is very similar to Anne's, which allows them to do various positions. Entering Elsie's bedroom, Lucian smells her scent everywhere, but there's no comparison to smelling her natural fragrance from her furniture and bed to her p.u.s.s.y directly. He lays her on her bed and starts kissing her whole body while she awkwardly tries to take off his UNDRWR. Then Lucian turns around and lies on his back on the bed, taking up its entire space. Elsie smiles as she enjoys the scene of Lucian on her bed before quickly taking off his UNDRWR. F-U-C-K. She exclaims out as she realizes how hard Lucian C.O.C.K is, horny for her. Dot before, Elsie could only see Lucian C.O. C.K as other people's treasure. 
She always wanted to touch, smell, lick it, but she couldn't. Now that he is lying on her bed, ready to give her everything she wants as her husband, Elsie wants to enjoy everything she has dreamed of in the past few weeks. She wants an entire hour just to watch Lucian C.O.C.K, another hour to smell it, lick it, and at least three hours of S.U.C.K.I.N.G it. But she will have time for all that later because her body right now cannot handle the D.E.S.I.R.E to have Lucian C.O.C.K inside her more private part. Elsie strokes Lucian C.O.C.K quickly before sitting on his belly and moving backward, pressing his C.O.C.K between her B.U.T.T.O.C.K.S and touching her tail. Lucian feels incredible P.L.E.S.U.R.E as the shaft of his D.I.C.K touches her soft A.S.S while her excited tail wags animatedly around it. I love you. Elsie speaks in a loving tone while running her hands over his CHST. He starts to stroke her tail while smiling. Love you too, my dear. Hashtag 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 If you want to support me and read more than 150 chapters ahead, visit my Patreon. Patreon.com slash lament high ef you can also donate to my Kofi. KO.FI.com slash lament high ef any donation helps me a lot and allows me to continue writing. Chapter 342 Always a good time, R.1.8, you are listening at novelfull.audio. Elsie smiles at Lucian as she tilts her body to the side and positions his C.O.C.K below her. Although she wants to sit down and take all that big C.O.C.K inside her eager P.U.S.S.Y, she thinks it is better to tease Lucian first and make him D.E.S.I.R.E her even more. Then she makes the most seductive expression she can while moving his C.O.C.K in different directions, rubbing its head on her pink flower. Lucian feels indescribable P.L.E.S.U.R.E while feeling his most S.E.N.S.I.T.I.V.E part rubbing Elsie's soft P.U.S.S.Y. Also, her pubic hair is so soft and fluffy that it makes him crazily horny. M.M.M. Elsie tries to tease Lucian, but she ends up m.o.e.ning first because the p.l.e.s.u.r.e she is feeling is also incredibly amazing. Lucian c.o.c.k feels so hot, and she can also feel it throbbing. She continues teasing him while rubbing his c.o.c.k more intensely as he sees waist and t.h.i.g.hs. Both already want to come with that stimulation, but while Lucian has complete control over his body, Elsie is having a hard time holding her liquids for the best part. MMM, how much? MMM, do you want this? She asks between m.o.a.ns. Lucian chuckles. As much as you do. So this is a lot. Elsie giggles. Then she starts to lower her body just a little, enough for the tip of Lucian C.O.C.K to start opening her beautiful, tight pink cave. A.H. Although Lucian's pre.C.U.M. added to her love juices make the entrance of his C.O.C.K tip in her P.U.S.S.Y really smooth, Elsie still M.O.A.N.S. loudly for the new P.L.A.S.U.R.E. They both smile at each other as she pulls her P.U.S.S.Y up to tease Lucian even more. And well, it totally works because his C.O.C.K quickly starts to miss that adorable tightness of her P.U.S.S.Y entrance. Lucian begins to see D.R.E.S.S. down Elsie's waist with both hands, making his D.R.E.S.R. ES for her body clear. She smiles proudly and starts to lower her body again. This time she doesn't back down but starts moving her H.I.P. sideways while still teasing him. You are adorable. Lucian says as he finds Elsie's teasing personality really nice. And also likes to tease him in bed, but Elsie's self.control is impressive. 
Lucian can't help but think that it is due to their first dot time B with her being almost in the second layer of the mortal realm and the influence of pride's aura on her. Well, a woman much more powerful than Lucian will naturally have more resistance to his charm, especially if she is under the influence of pride's aura. But his demonic energy is getting more and more powerful, and Elsie is already at her limit, using all her will to tease him. Slowly, Elsie starts to descend more and more of her body. She feared it would hurt due to Lucian C.O.C.K being too thick, but her P.U.S.S.Y seems to be managing to stretch enough to hug it tightly, which gives both of them great plasure. M. Ah. She M.O.A.N.S. as she maintains eye contact with Lucian. But after having a significant part of his C.O.C.K inside her, she looks down and gets surprised to realize that it was only less than a quarter inside her. It's too big. It won't fit. She speaks with a concerned expression. Even though and explained to her about Lucian's life mana preventing his girls from feeling any pain, she can't believe that such a big thing will fit into her little flower. It's okay, just trust me. Lucian knows what words can describe some things and slowly and gently brings her body down. Elsie doesn't resist Lucian's movement and lets her body descend further. She feels his big C.O.C.K slowly making its way through her pink cave. M. The feeling of having her inside stretched by Lucian's big and warm gentle C.O.C.K is really magnificent. She quickly becomes addicted to it while M.O.A.Ning continuously. Then the tip of Lucian's D.I. C.K meets Elsie's H.O.M.E.N. It kisses that sacred seal while they both look at each other with loving expressions. He stops bringing her body down and lets Elsie take that last step to completely give her body to him. Elsie doesn't think twice and breaks her H.Y.M.E.N, forcing her body down. Ah. Dot. She M.O.A.N.S and leans her body over Lucian's, seeking his lips for a passionate kiss. As they kiss, Lucian moves her waist up, pulling his C.O.C.K a little back and then down, slowly trusting it inside her again. So he continues to repeat that movement of descending and raising her body over his, exploring every part of her insides. Elsie's mind starts to go blank again while the P.L.E.S.U.R.E. Lucian gives her with his hands, mouth, and C.O.C.K is unbelievable. His demonic energy runs through her body, making her feel better than ever and more powerful. That feels much better than pride's energy. She quickly understands why all Lucian's wives love a CX with him. It is not just about the most incredible P.L.E.S.U.R.E. she has ever had, but it is her connecting with her lover in such a deep way as they both become more powerful. Before Elsie realizes it, she is already moving her H.I.P.S. up and down, back and forth, taking Lucian C.O.C.K deeper and deeper, harder and harder inside her while he just strokes her waist. Ah, 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 mm. Ah. Dot. Her M. O. Dot. N. S. Echo through her small house as she rides Lucian C. O. C. K. Madly. Her V. I. R. G. I. N. P. U. S. S. Y. Soon starts having the second O. R. G. S. M. With Lucian, but she does not slow down her movements. On the contrary, she uses her P. U. S. S. Y. Twitches in such a state to squeeze Lucian C. O. C. K. Tighter and tighter. Lucian feels incredible p.l.e.s.u.r.e while Elsie's p.u.s.s.y seems to want to lock his c.o.c.k inside her forever, only for her. And well, that's the wish of all his wives. Hard as a rock, Lucian c.o.c.k meets every part of Elsie's p.u.s.s.y from up to down until her p.u.s.s.y bottom. Then at the peak of her O.R.G.S.M, she pressed her body further down, taking the tip of Lucian C.O.C.K into her cervix. M. Mm, see that you got him there, please. She begs. Lucian is surprised by Elsie's specific request, 
but he quickly understands that and must have told her about the possibility that his wives are pregnant, so Elsie must want all his C.U.M. in her baby room. And, of course, he doesn't deny her request, C.U.M.M.I.N.G inside her deepest part. Oh. Elsie feels her fluid squirting out of her P.U.S.S.Y while Lucian fills her body with that incredibly pleasurable hot liquid. Ha. <sighs> She m.o.i.ns loudly while his c.o.c.k pours so much hot c.o.c.k milk inside her baby room. That feeling is certainly the best so far, and Elsie is obviously addicted as she tries to enjoy every second of it. For Lucian and Elsie, only p.l.e.s.u.r.e fills their minds as they focus on their connection but L.U.S.T and Envy pay close attention to the changes in their bodies. Well, in the case of Lucian, he just advances further into the fifth layer. But in the case of Elsie, the changes are really significant. When she entered the mortal realm due to the influence of Pride's aura, Elsie just experienced a high increase in her strength and agility. But now, reaching the second layer with Lucian's demonic energy, she is having an explosive increase in all her physical capabilities and waking up something special inside her. Just like what happened to Anne, a new tale is growing alongside her original one, which is also getting a little longer. A Peculiar Hereditary Ability L.U.S.T comments to Envy Fox girls with more than one tail. I don't remember hearing anything about it. Envy responds while she is actually more focused on Lucian C.O.C.K than Elsie's ability. L.U.S.T explains to Lucian about Elsie's second tale and speaks her thoughts. Greed once had a fox host, and although she didn't have more than one tail, they lived for a time among her people, and maybe she knows something about this hereditary ability. Lucian remembers that and said something about her mother knowing stories about a fox. Woman with more than one tail, but they forgot to talk about it because they were so focused on talking about their adventures and the ceremony, but he now makes a mental note to remember that and also ask Greed about it when they meet. He focuses on Elsie again, kissing her while C.V.A.R.E.S. sing her original tale and the other one, which will still take a few days to finish growing like Anne's. Elsie has not yet noticed her second tale, as she is in the clouds of P.L.E.S.U.R.E., while Lucian's hot C that you dot M prolongs her O point R point G point a point S point MS, making it an unforgettable moment. Her body goes limp, and she loses strength due to so many waves of P.L.E.S.U.R.E., but she can trust her whole body in Lucian's arms as he supports her now and will do it forever. Ah. Mmm. Elsie lies on Lucian C.H.E.S.T and just enjoy that moment for a while as she sniffs his wonderful scent. She's so comfortable that she looks like she's going to nap now, but Lucian knows that she just needs a break before asking for a second round. Some of her blood runs along with the excess of his C.U.M from her P.U.S.S.Y while he takes her in his arms. Then he opens the purple world portal and enters it, also taking Elsie's little bed to her new home. Arriving in the main hall on the fifth floor of his house, Lucian leaves her bed there so that she can choose a single bedroom later because now he takes her to their main bedroom. Lucian lays her on his big bed so that she can get some rest. Then he rolls over on the bed and stops with open arms. Come on. His two lovely great demons immediately materialized their bodies in his arms. Both are excitedly smiling. So charming. Lucian comments as he kisses both L.U.S.T and Envy. Having such perfect sisters only for him seems unfair to all men in the universe, but this is Lucian, someone whose selfishness has no limits. While Lucian kisses L.U.S.T, Envy kisses his C.H.E.S.T just like L.U.S.T does when he kisses Envy. Still, both keep a hand constantly stroking his C.O.C.K. An amazing hand job. So he focuses on enjoying the delicious flavor of L.U.S.T's little mouth while moving Envy's head towards his C.O.C.K. His rough touch makes Envy feel even more P.L.E.S.U.R.E. and obediently, 
she starts to lick and suck his D-I-C-K. Even after doing that so many times, Lucian still finds S-E-X incredibly pleasurable and feels lucky that his way of getting stronger is it. He feels like P.L.E.S.U.R.E is the thing he has the most control over in his life, and while it is his main weapon, it is also the best way to make his girls satisfied. L.U.S.T.M.O.A.N.S. Having her mouth devoured by Lucian's dominant tongue and her brie A.S.T.S. stroked and squeezed by his hands compete with Envy's slurp sounds while she sucks on his C.O.C.K. Both sounds making a melody for Lucian to enjoy, and Elsie take a short break. That position seems perfect for him, but L.U.S.T. soon becomes jealous of Envy and moves to his C.O.C.K., also wanting to drink her favorite thing, in fact, the only thing that works as food for her. Between S.U.C.K. N.G. his C.O.C.K. shaft, head, and his balls, L.U.S.T. and Envy make a sloppy mess on his groin, giving him a lot of P.L.E.S.U.R.E. with their soft tongues while begging him with their eyes. Despite wanting more blowjob time before coming, Lucian has almost infinite C. Udadim while generating demonic energy and stimulating his life mana, so he doesn't spare a drop of C.O.C.K. milk and shot a huge load of it on both great demon sisters. Yep. Ha ha ha. Both L.U.S.T. and Envy excitedly laugh as they delight in Lucian's warm essence running over their bodies. Lucian smiles as he finds it refreshing to see L.U.S.T. and Envy getting along as loving sisters at least once. Well, it seems that none of his wives can have any negative feelings while he F.U.C. K them. Hashtag 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 If you want to support me and read more than 150 chapters ahead, visit my Patreon. Patreon.com slash lament if you can also donate to my Kofi. KO.fi.com slash lament if any donation helps me a lot and allows me to continue writing. Chapter 343 Mysterious Ancestor You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. BVEC While Lucian has an incredible love session with L.U.S.T. Envy, and Elsie in the Purple World, his other wives continue to learn more about the Great Forest of Alliance with Lore to know where to look for the best offerings for the ceremony. All the girls are very excited, especially Anne, but Amelia has an upset expression on her face. The other girls know why, but Lore is worried that she's upsetting Queen Eves and her son. In. Law's sister. Is something wrong, my lady? Lore asks Amelia in a respectful tone. She knows that Amelia is still a little upset by the misunderstanding at the beginning of the night, and that is why Lore is really sorry. Amelia was not happy when Lore thought Lucian was lying, but she has already forgotten that and thinks well of Mama Fox now. They are. Stupid envy. Stupid brother. Amelia comments while she can even feel envy's and Lucian's happiness through their connection. Laura is confused, and then shakes her head at her, subtly indicating that she shouldn't ask any more further. Ahem. Laura makes a sound to get attention and smiles at the girls. Well, I already explained the most important points. Yet, as you will do the same ceremony and travel together, and an Elsie can guide you through the forest without any problems. Still, remember to take the flower, feather, and tree alone with your own effort. Mm. The girls nod. But then Lore looks at little Ko. Well, you can have help when catching a bird if it is dangerous SD you are still very young. Little Ko understands that Lore is concerned about her safety, but she no longer sees herself as a child but as one of Lucian's companions. That's why she shows her fangs with a confident smile. Lore finds Ko's confident attitude very cute, but while Oya smiles proudly, Cassidy explains. Little Ko is already in the mortal realm, yet she has strength superior to the first layer due to Lucian's paths. And vaguely explained to her about the four chaos realms, and although Lore doesn't understand much about it, she can assume Ko's strength by comparing her to Dawn, 
who is still in the first layer of the mortal realm and has very little demonic energy from Lucian inside her body. So, to avoid the mood getting embarrassing, she looks around. Where's Elsie? She's with Lucian, and responds with a slight flush on her face, which Lore doesn't notice. Oh, they're talky. She starts to speak but stops when she notices and getting even more flushed and shaking her head at her. Lore is surprised that they are doing it right now, but not that it is happening. When she asked Lucian about his interaction with Anne, he said that nothing could separate them from him, that is, he already included Elsie as his wife too, and both she and Anne seemed very happy about that. Elsie is already an ADU.L.T woman who can choose her destiny. And I can't say that she's making the wrong choice, but... Lore comments while thinking about her sister. In fact, Elsie is a year older than Anne because when Lore told her mother that she was not going to become the clan's new matriarch, Louise looked for a man just to have a child and to start preparing them for when she could no longer lead the clan. Louise always tried her best as leader and protector of the clan. She wanted to have several children in case some of them wanted to have normal lives like Lore, there would still be a high chance of someone being interested in leading the clan as she did. But after realizing how bad it was to have CX with someone she doesn't love, she was unable to have other children. Still, Elsie always showed interest in protecting the clan, which made Louise really satisfied. Now, Laura is worried that Louise will be alone after Elsie leaves with Lucien, mainly because Louise loves her daughter and would never stop her from following the path she wants. And really understands her mother and smiles at her. Don't worry about it. I can't say for sure, but I think Aunt Louise would be happy to follow Eve and Lucien, knowing that the clan is in good hands. Good hands. Lore is confused. And looks at Galena and Galana at the back of the room. The M. E. Elf nods respectfully to Lore. The Alliance will have no problems as long as Galena leads it according to Eve's standards, but will she stay behind while Louise goes with Eve and Lucian? Can any single mother not follow their son. In. Law when he is Lucian? Thinking too much about the future will not change anything now, and as Laura's first attempt to not let the mood get strange has completely failed, she tries again. Well, let's keep talking and drink more apple wine while we wait for them. She smiles at the girls. The girls quickly agree because they all really liked the apple wine made by Anne's parents. Even Kara drank a lot of it while only Ko chose to drink apple juice instead. The group just had time to talk for a few minutes before Lucian and Elsie entered Lore's house. In fact, the love session lasted more than an hour, but the Purple World's temporal dilatation made their time longer there. The radiant smile on Elsie's face and the fact that she has Lucian's scent all over her body even after taking a bath makes it clear what they did for everyone and runs over to Elsie and hugs her tight. You were already my sister in heart, but now we also share this connection. Elsie cannot be happier as she smiles at having a cousin, or rather, sister as good as Anne. Most women would not want to share their man with other people, but Anne is really happy that Elsie also becomes Lucian's wife as she knows that he will take good care of them both. Laura is still a little concerned about Louise's future. Still, she can't help but be happy for the girls. This will certainly be the most animated wedding ceremony ever. Sorry for delaying your plans. Elsie talks to Lucian's wives. Angela approaches her and gently holds her hand. I don't worry about that, now you're one of us. Well, we already want to go look for the offerings. Are you coming with us? Of course. Elsie speaks in a lively tone. Lucian's wives have always been nice to her, but now they are her sisters, and that is incredible because she admits them all. Lucian smiles at the girls. I will not disturb you, but it is still better to we stay within a five-dot-mile radius so that if something happens, I can reach you fast. So overprotective. Several of the girls speak at the same time. He smiles as Amelia hugs him tightly. I will be with them. Also, this stupid envy can feel it if there is any danger around. 
Envy doesn't feel like arguing with Amelia now because her soul feels incredibly good after being f.u.c.k.e.d by Lucian. Mia approaches Lucian and hugs him too. Oh, Lore mentioned a good spot to look for rare flowers, and that place is also near the Lake of Tears. Lucian kisses her lips. Nice, I really want to go there and find the best precious stones for my beautiful ladies. The girl's eyes sparkle with anticipation as they are sure that Lucian will always give them all the best. They go to him one by one to give a quick goodbye kiss even though they will not be really away and just in different groups, where Lucian's group will be only him and LUST. Then the group of girls leaves Lore's house and heads towards the south, specifically to the area known as the Sorrow Forest because of some strange sounds that occasionally come from the Lake of Tears. But although the girls are very eager for the ceremony, they do not run but walk through the streets of the main fox. Village, enjoying its charm and talking about women's matters. Well, their favorite subject is Lucian and their future plans, mainly about the possibility that they are already pregnant. Also, and sends Lucian a mental message. Don't seduce my mother, please. I would never do that. Lucian quickly responds. He really likes Anne's parents and doesn't want to cause any problems for them. Anne knows that and trusts Lucian, but she still explains her request. I know it, but that smell of yours is devilishly addictive. If you get too close to my mother, her love for my father will be weakened until it is gone. I'll be careful. Lucian responds while understanding Anne's concern. He really has to be careful with his natural charm when he definitely doesn't want to seduce anyone. And as soon as all the girls leave Lore's house, she looks at him with a thoughtful expression after looking at the door to her bedroom with an apprehensive expression. Then she speaks in a low tone to Lucian. Come with me, I have to tell you something important. Lucian is obviously surprised by Lore's change in attitude. Still, he doesn't think it is anything about him but Anne. Lore walks down the corridor and checks if Clovis is really asleep before heading to a small room that appears to be a pantry. Upon entering the room, she quickly closes the door, and Lucian realizes that it is really a pantry. He can't help but be uncomfortable staying in such a small room, mainly because of his high height and wings. Still, Lucian imagines that this is even more uncomfortable for Lore because she loves her husband, and it is difficult to deal with his charm, especially his natural scent at a short distance. Yet, she seems to have something important to say, and Lucian just remains silent, waiting for her to speak. Lucian gets more and more curious while Lore doesn't say anything and just wiggles on a food shelf. She moves several pots until she reveals an area of the wall where there is a symbol that he has never seen. He can't help remembering when Madeline took them to the L Group's headquarters through a pantry too, but in this case, there is no secret passage in Lore's pantry but something hidden inside the wall by magic. A type of magic safe. From inside the small area that she opens inside the wall, she takes out a bracelet. L.U.S.T quickly tells Lucian that it is a storage treasure incredibly powerful, probably having hundreds of miles of inner space. Lore holds the bracelet in both hands while looks at Lucian with a concerned expression. This belonged to an ancestor of mine. This treasure has been in my family for hundreds of years. She takes a book off the bracelet and gives it to Lucian. In the book, there is nothing written on the cover, which is just brown. Then she explains. I never showed it to Anne because there are strange and mysterious things in this book. I was only going to show it to her when I was older, but after seeing her second tale, I was really worried. This. Lucian makes a curious expression as he looks at the book. This is the two tales Queen's Diary, Lore responds. Hashtag 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 if you want to support me and read more than 150 chapters ahead, visit my Patreon. Patreon.com slash lament high ef you can also donate to my Kofi. KO.fi.com slash lament high ef any donation helps me a lot and allows me to continue writing. Chapter 344
Adeline's Diary You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 344 Adeline's Diary, The Two Tales Queen And commented that you knew stories about her, and I wanted to ask about her second tale. Lucian speaks to Lore. Adeline was her name, Lore speaks and then continues. All families have ancestors and old stories, but some are more complicated than others. Lucian is silent to hear Lore's story while holding the diary of Adeline, the Two Tales Queen, in his hands without opening it yet. She explains. Many people in the Fox. Clan and the whole alliance know stories about the Two Tales Queen as she revolutionized an era by creating the Fox. Clan of small separated villages. She was really incredible and probably the most powerful Fox. Woman that has ever existed in this world. Lore pauses while remembering how Anne is now much more powerful than Dawn, the only person she can have as an example of power comparison based on stories. Well, maybe she wasn't as strong as and is now. Lore corrects herself. So she continues. Also, many legends are overrated because people tend to improve those stories to make certain people look better than they really were. Lore makes a sorry expression before continuing to explain. I'm not saying that the legends about the Two Tales Queen were a lie, but I also can't say that everything was true. When my mother told those stories to Louise and me, we found it incredible to have such a powerful ancestor, but then when my mother was very old, she showed us this diary. Lore points to the book in Lucian's hand. So everything changed. Lore makes a concerned expression. In this diary, Adeline's thoughts are written. She was very afraid of everything. She was a traumatized person who thought someone was looking for her. Hunting her. Lucian is even more curious about Adeline's story and how it is connected to Anne and her family. He remains silent to hear Lore's words. Lore shakes her head, clearly in disagreement with herself. Adeline came out of nowhere. She was the first fox. Woman with two tails, but she wrote in the diary that it was a curse. She thought someone would come after her because of her second tale. She makes a sorry expression. When Louise and I read this diary, we thought it was a lie or Adelina was just a crazy person because nothing strange happened like someone looking for her or another fox. Woman with two tails. Until now. Lore and Lucian speak at the same time while thinking about Anne and Elsie. Lore nods. Yes, now that there are other fox. Women with two tails, I realize that Adelina could really be right about this being a curse, and someone can come after my Anne. Lucian puts a hand on Lore's shoulder and speaks in a confident tone. Don't worry about her safety. And is secure with us. If someone comes after her, they will only find their death here. Then he smiles. About her two tales, well, I don't know about curses, but that doesn't seem like one anyway. She loves her tales, and that's her special ability even though we don't know how it works yet. L.U.S.T materializes her body in the small pantry next to Lucian. Her tales are definitely not a curse. Maybe Adelina didn't understand that either, but greed must have some answers. I hope this is not a bad thing for my daughter, Lore speaks and then points to the diary. You can read it if you want, I would have to give it to Anne and Elsie like my mom gave it to Louise and me, but I prefer that it stays with you now and that you protect them. Lucian holds the diary tightly while looking into Lore's eyes. I will not hide this from Anne and Elsie, but I will make sure that they are always safe and do not feel afraid as Adeline was. Also, I will do my best to understand what happened. Now our best clue is this diary and maybe Greed's knowledge. Lore nods. I understand. I didn't want to worry them about something that could just be a false legend, but now I also think it's best to tell them. Also, I'm glad you don't think about hiding anything from them. While Lucian and Lore think essentially about the well.being of Anne and Elsie, L.U.S.T is more curious about the diary, mainly because of the bracelet that is an artifact at last of the level of a medium world. Let's read this. L.U.S.T speaks, and Lucian quickly opens the diary as he is also curious to read Adeline's story. 
Adeline's homeland language is actually very similar to ours, but. Lore comments. Upon seeing the first page of the diary, Lucian realizes that he can easily read most of the words, but some are slightly different. In fact, he cannot recognize some letters between words, in some cases, those letters appear to be something meaningless additional in certain words. Also, he realizes that Adeline's language is more similar to one of his homeworld than Argerim's. It's a code. Lucian and L.U.S.T speak together when they notice a standard of letters left over between the words. Incredible. How did you notice so quickly? Lore is impressed as she can only read that code because her mother taught her. Well, Lucian's reading speed is incredibly high due to his senses being heightened. Also, L.U.S.T and he is in complete sync, being able to see things from different ways while sharing knowledge as one person. Lucian starts reading everything written in the diary to understand more about the code and the story. The first page begins with the arrival of Adeline in that village where in the future it would be the main village of the Fox. Clan. He reads it out loud. My name is Adeline Du Bois, and I write here my free memory so that if something happens to me, my story will be not forgotten. Today, I arrived in a beautiful forest. There are a lot of big brown trees here like in my home. I miss home. But I can't go back. They must still be looking for me, but they won't find me here, right? I ran away for a long time. This has to be a good place to hide. And maybe start over, create a new life. I can't go back. I am a cursed person. I will never see that forest again. I will never see that tree again. But this place looks good too. The people here are the same as my people. Still, I need to make some radical changes here. I need to show them how powerful we are, just like in my home. I'm going to start making these changes right now. I was never someone who just expect things to happen. When he finishes reading the first page, Lucian notices many additional letters left between some words, but he cannot identify those letters. Is this a different language? Lucian thinks out loud. Lore quickly nods. Yes, this language is part of the code that my mother taught me. As she prepares to tell Lucian what is written in that code, L.U.S.T remembers a vague knowledge almost lost in her memories. This. I think I've seen that language before. Greed taught me about it. Although her host was not royalty, they managed to learn about it. L.U.S.T speaks as he stares at the letters. Lore and Lucian are silent while L.U.S.T runs her fingers on the diary page. Yes, this is encoded star language. Before Lucian asks anything, L.U.S.T explains. There are seven medium worlds that have made a pact to protect themselves against the superior races. That pact was called Star Pact, and its worlds are called the Seven Stars. The people who started the Star Pact were the vampires, and their world is the Seventh Star, the Red Star. In descending order are the other stars according to their general power level. Every star has its own secret code, and the main leaders of each race of the seven stars must know these codes to communicate secretly. So L.U.S. T points to the diary. This code is from the third star, the brown star, also the world mainly governed by the fox. Race. When she says, brown star, Laura's eyes sparkle, and she quickly comments. Oh, that's why she talks so much about that brown forest and like out brown oaks. Exactly. L.U.S.T nods and points again to the additional letters on that page of the diary. I miss the brown forest. I will never see the great oak again. Then she explains. The brown star is, as the name suggests, an essentially brown place. What does it be like that is because that world is actually a large forest with brown leafy trees. Also, in the center of that world, there is a giant tree that can be seen thousands of miles away. It's called the Great Oak and is said to be the home of the nature spirit. Lucian and Lore are impressed by L.U.S.T's story. He thinks about something and asks. 
so it was Adeline who brought knowledge about the nature spirit here. Yes, she talks about it in the diary, Lore replies. Interesting. It seems like many people from other worlds come here. Lucian thinks out loud. I don't know if that is exactly good for us, but now I think and may have an inheritance ability of the royalty from the brown star. L.U.S.T comments. Lucian makes a concerned expression. So the people Adeline feared are from the brown star. Maybe she was a princess who ran away and feared that her family would come after her. L.U.S.T quickly responds. It's a possibility. The Sven star are strong because they are united, but individually, they are just medium worlds. She smiles as she see .e.s.ses Lucian's neck, making Lore even more uncomfortable inside the small pantry. We have great advantages of the demon and dragon race, so if some noble idiots from the brown star want to make trouble for us. Well, you will enjoy crushing them. L.U.S.T finishes her words kissing Lucian. Lucian sighs. I thought and had a normal life, but it seems that things are complicated for her and LC too. Fate is getting you in the way of important people even in this inferior world. This is a good thing because we are destined for greatness anyway. L.U.S.T smiles. He reflects on L.U.S.T's words as he looks at Lore. So you also have the blood of the brown star nobility. But I don't have two tails. Lore thinks out loud. L.U.S.T smiles teasingly. Oh, it woke up in Anne and Elsie when they experienced Lucian's energy. Lore makes a flushed expression as she tries to distance herself from Lucian, but the pantry doesn't allow that, nor is she sure if her body would obey her after feeling so much of Lucian's addictive fragrance. I really don't want a second tale. I love my simple life next to Clovis, and I don't want to cause anybody trouble. Lore speaks in a worried tone. Lucian talks to L.U.S.T mentally. I really like my father. In law, so don't destroy our friendship, please. Are you really going to give up one of your mothers? In law? I thought you wanted them all. L.U.S.T jokes. I am satisfied with the ones I currently have, thank you. Lucian smiles. Then he opens the pantry door and leaves, allowing Lore to breathe properly. I'm going to read this diary completely, but now I need to go because the girls are already almost five miles from here, Lucian speaks to Lore. Sorry to give you this problem, but I really hope you take care of my girls and yours as well. Also, get this. It would be of Anne and Elsie's anyway. Lore gives Lucian Adeline's bracelet, also containing some of her personal stuff. Taking care of my girls is my main goal. Lucian smiles at Lore and accepts the bracelet before walking out of the house and flapping his wings, flying to the sky. Lore takes a deep breath as she watches Lucian quickly disappear into the starry sky while trying to imagine what kind of adventures he and his girls have ahead. Hashtag 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 if you want to support me and read more than 150 chapters ahead, visit my Patreon. Patreon.com slash lament if you can also donate to my Kofi. KO.fi.com slash lament if any donation helps me a lot and allows me to continue writing. Chapter 345 Ghost Lady You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. While Lucian's wives head south through the Fox. Clan forest, he follows them through the sky a few miles away, giving them space but also keeping an eye on the surroundings. Lucian respects the power of his wives, especially Amelia and Envy, but after the recent discoveries, he knows that everything is possible even in this world. Dangers can be hidden very close to them and being careful is necessary. While keeping his senses focused, he actually flies relaxed with his back toward the ground, and L.U.S.T is mounted on his belly. They are kissing and touching each other, of course. This is all so crazy. First, a dark angel's feather, then that group of angels. 
Next, that mysterious person came in your dreams and now this mystery of Anne's heritage. L.U.S.T commends in Lucian's mind while their lips are connected. We cannot say that things are boring. Lucian comments in a relaxed tone, but L.U.S.T knows that he can't stop for a second from worrying about his mother and his sisters that are away from him. She avoids talking about it or the blood rose because she knows they can't do anything about it right now, and Lucian still feels bad that he can't have everyone he loves with him now. It's normal for things to be exciting where my sisters and I are, but this is really crazy. We are still in an inferior world, but we are already involved in so many things. She speaks. That is good, right? Lucian asks and quickly explains. I mean, if we find challenges that we can overcome, we will become stronger in order to be able to overcome the most difficult challenges more quickly. It's a good way of thinking. I just fear that we will find some problems too difficult to solve with our current power level. I can't imagine you running away from an enemy again. L.U.S.T responds. Lucian stops kissing L.U.S.T and smiles at her. I'm not that proud. I think about the well. Being of my loved ones first, and things like pride came later. L.U.S.T also smiles as she shakes her head. You already act like an arrogant and proud dragon. And we, your wives, like to see you as the best man ever, flying higher than anyone. We just should be more careful from now on. I'm careful, aren't I? He asks. Yes. But not, too. You will do anything for any of your wives even if it is dangerous, and right now, you are thinking of jumping into that lake to see if that ghost lady is a beauty from another world and make her your wife. She explains. Lucian chuckles. You were the first to encourage me to have many wives. She kisses his lips. I know, but I didn't think you would find so many amazing women so quickly. Also, your energy is so incredible that it makes ordinary women become highly talented ones. You're just jealous, aren't you? He smiles teasingly. L.U.S.T pouts. Maybe a little bit. He laughs at her cute reaction. Don't worry. I'll be even more careful. And about the ghost lady, it is probably a water monster or a fake legend. Also, I won't just jump into the lake before you analyze it. She makes a relieved expression. Okay. I'm not trying to tell you how to do things or give you orders. I just care about our future. Lucian gently strokes her hair before kissing her. I know. You are perfect as a wife. But I think you should be more sinful as a sin. She giggles. I should but you are already very sinful without my influence. He he he. Lucian laughs as they continue to fly above the Fox Clan forest. He and L.U.S.T have a nice kissing and see that A.R.S.T sing session while his wives talk as they travel through the forest. They do not fly so that they can look for rare flowers on the ground. Lucian keeps his focus on the surroundings and does not try to listen to the girls' conversation, but he can feel that they are enjoying themselves through their connection. The girls are only really happy around Lucian, but they are very excited to be doing this ceremony for him, and of course, they just talk about him and the life with him, like planets that revolve around a sun. Although they are not flying, the speed of Lucian's wives is still high when they run, and in about an hour, he notices some changes in the vegetation of the forest below them. The beautiful and vivid forest of the Fox Dot Clan is replaced by a silent forest with trees with few dark brown leaves. The vegetation appears to be slightly ill, but at the same time, the trees do not appear to be dying. I can feel something ahead. I think the ghost lady is real and a powerful being. Envy mentally warns Lucian while she feels something in the forest. She feels that before L.U.S.T because she and Amelia are a few miles ahead of them. Lucian warns L.U.S.T and flies forward quickly. Soon L.U.S.T also feels the same presence and warns him. Interesting. 
This creature appears to be in Earth Realm early layers. Um. Lucian is really curious about the ghost lady. He knows he must be careful, but because he managed to take place against the leader angel of that group even when he took a pill of power and had his strength improved at the beginning of Sky Realm, Lucian has no problem meeting the ghost lady despite L.U.S.T saying that she's in the Earth Realm. Lucian tells his wives about ghost lady and that he is going to check the lake. They quickly ask if he wants help. Lore said that we have to make the offering with our own efforts. Lucian says to his wives. Okay, but if something goes wrong, let us know. We will check a flower field a mile to the east. Cassidy answers for the girls. Right. Lucian flies towards the lake. It is approximately 500 meters square in length, and Lucian can see that the water is cloudy even at night due to his incredible vision. Also, the lake is surrounded by distorted trees and a strange fog that is not present in other parts of the forest. It looks like a very strange scene, and certainly scary for some people. But Lucian is not afraid of the lake's strange atmosphere. He lands on its bank and looks at the cloudy water while talking to L.U.S.T., do you know how deep it is? L.U.S.T. shakes her head. I don't know but the energy comes from 300 meters below the surface. Oh, it's profound, Lucian comments as he crouches down and touches the water. Also, it is really cold. It also touches water. Hmm. I feel a lot of water energy here, but that energy doesn't look like Angela's water mana. This seems to be modified and is influencing everything around the lake. Can you tell if the creature is a beast or a person? Lucian asks. She shakes her head. This energy is extraordinary, I need to get closer to the creature to understand more about it. Okay, I'm going to dive, Lucian speaks as he starts to take off his clothes. L.U.S.T is very curious about the ghost lady, but when she sees Lucian undressing, she is mesmerized by his body while carefully watching every part of him. Damn. I love you so f.u.c.k.i.n.g much. She comments as she licks her lips. Do you want to ask the ghost lady for permission we f.u.c.k in her house? Lucian asks jokingly. Sure I do. L.u.s.t laughs, but she can't stop looking at Lucian's u.n.d.e.r.w.a.r eager to see his deed at i.c.k even though they had a cx an hour ago. Lucian was going to even take off his u.n.d.e.r.w.a.r to dive more comfortably, but now he changes his mind. I will keep the u.n.d.e.r.w.a.r so that you focus on our goal. Meanie. L.u.s.t pouts. He chuckles and jumps into the lake while L.U.S.T returns to his soul. Despite the water being very cold, Lucian does not feel any discomfort because the energies inside his body always keep him in good condition. He dives towards the bottom of the lake, and even though his vision is good, he sees nothing more than a meter from his face, so he moves relying mainly on his other senses and L. U.S.T's spiritual sense. Using his incredible strength and agility, also his wings, Lucian manages to dive down 200 meters into the lake incredibly fast while still maintaining more than half of his air reserve. Due to his demonic energy, life mana, a little of water and wind mana from his girls, he can stay underwater without breathing for about 5 minutes. It's coming towards us. L.U.S.T warns Lucian after they reach less than 100 meters from the ghost lady. Lucian stops moving and prepares to summon his red katana at any indication of hostility. But he still maintains a neutral posture because he has no idea what that creature is. L.U.S.T focuses all her senses on analyzing the creature, but the ghost lady's energy is very chaotic. Her energy is not allowing me to understand what she is. But I can feel that she is feeling many turbulent emotions. Hate, anger, depression, regret, despair. So, is she hostile? Lucian asks. I still do not know. 
L.U.S.T responds. So she keeps trying to find out anything about Ghost Lady. Wait. 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 L.U.S.T continues to advise Lucian not to summon his katana. But when the creature gets less than 30 meters from him, she understands what the Ghost Lady is. It's a sword. L.U.S.T exclaims in Lucian's mind. At the same time, Lucian feels the water around him moving. He summons his red katana, and right in front of him appears a silver blade moving towards him at high speed while piercing the water so easily as if it were air. Lucian raises his katana with all his strength, also using his demonic energy, and although he is unable to use all his speed due to the density of the water, he still manages to deflect the silver blade, avoiding the blow. How is it af.u.c.k.i.n.g sword alone? Lucian asks L.U.S.T. She is hostile. She responds. Lucian deflects another strike of the silver blade. He can only see it coming out of nowhere and attacking him. It is challenging to fight like that, but he can predict the blade's movements with the help of L.U.S.T. and his other senses. I realize that it is hostile, but why are you calling it her? Lucian asks as he continues to deflect the strikes of the silver blade. Cursed objects can develop personalities. And isn't her name Ghost Lady? That is feminine. She responds. The Ghost Lady starts moving around Lucian, trying to attack him from different angles, and he is surprised at how smart the sword is. I do not believe that I am fighting a sword alone. And I'm on the defensive side. Lucian comments to L.U.S.T. I can't believe we found a cursed sword. You are really lucky. She responds. How am I going to use a rebel sword with personality? He asks. You have to tame it. Come on, have you tamed Envy, and are you telling me you can't do the same with a sword? L.U.S.T speaks in a joking tone. I can't F.U.C.K the sword, can I? He also responds in a joking tone. L.U.S.T thinks for a few seconds. But you can put your energy in her. Maybe it will work, dot, it can work, but. She doesn't look like she's going to let me touch her that easily. Lucian makes a thoughtful expression as he continues to deflect the ghost lady strikes. Hashtag 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 If you want to support me and read more than 150 chapters ahead, visit my Patreon. Patreon.com slash lament if you can also donate to my Kofi. KO.fi.com slash lament if any donation helps me a lot and allows me to continue writing. Chapter 346. H.spot you are listening at novel full.audio. Clang sounds would be heard around Lake of Tears as Lucian blocks and deflect the ghost lady strikes if those sounds were not muffled by the water. Fighting a sword alone inside the water is not an easy task. Still, Lucian is committed to taming the ghost lady, not for himself as he is fine with his red katana and Eileen's naginata but to give that powerful silver blade to one of his wives. Yet, Lucian cannot breathe underwater, and his remaining breath is almost out. Go back to the surface, I believe she will follow you. L.U.S.T advises Lucian. He blocks the ghost lady's attack once more, pushes her back with all his strength, and then flaps his wings, quickly being propelled upward. Splash Lucian comes out of the lake, splashing water everywhere as he flaps his wings in a majestic way. That scene would be appreciated by all his wives if they were not now busy picking up rare flowers for the ceremony. But he is not doing a show and quickly turns around as he hears the ghost lady's thin silver blade slicing through water and air as she flies out the lake to attack him. She liked you. This sword is surely feminine, ha ha ha. L.U.S.T laughs. Lucian smiles as he blocks the ghost lady in the air. He takes a good look at that sword, and now that he is out of cloudy water, he can see all the details of that beautiful silver blade. 
The ghost lady has a long blade of 80 cm and is very thin with less than 3 cm in width. Also, there are words engraved on the blade with adornments that look like small flowers. But the most impressive part to Lucian is the ghost lady's hilt. It is about 15 cm long and has a half ball shaped protection grid from its cross. Guard to the pommel, which surround the rounded thin grip. Lucian has never seen a sword with a round guard and so big, but he quickly understands that it creates nice protection for the user of that sword's hand. Also, he found its design pretty cool. It's a rapier. L.U.S.T explains to Lucian. Oh, can you read what is written on the blade? Lucian asks as he continues to deflect and block Ghost Lady Striker in the air. Now, out of the water, he can use all his capabilities and is very comfortable with the fight, but the Silver Blade also doesn't seem to have any problems moving through the air even though her energy has only water affinity. L.U.S.T quickly tries to read the inscription on the Ghost Lady Blade and get surprised. I knew it. When the girls talked about this Ghost Lady, and you got curious, I knew it would end up being a woman from another world. She exclaims in Lucian's mind. Lucian makes a confused expression. You seem to be enjoying this, but this sword is trying to kill me. Oh, yes. You should try to put your demonic energy in her. Just hold her hilt firmly and focus your energy on her as you do to pass more energy on to your girls when having sex with them. L.U.S.T explains. Okay. Lucian replies. Picking up the sword as it moves crazily so fast seems like a challenge to anyone in Earth Realm, but when Lucian focuses all of his demonic energy on boost his capabilities, he reaches an unbelievable speed even for Earth Realm people. His body starts to glow with purple and gray energies as he uses the energy mix but saves that little white energy of pride that he got from Elsie. The ghost lady ignores the explosion of power from Lucian's aura and continues to attack him madly. Although L.U.S.T says that the sword has personality, it doesn't seem to have any intelligence. Dot Clang the ghost lady tries to pierce Lucian again, but he changes the direction of her attack using his red katana. The sound of metal hitting and rubbing against each other echoes loudly. The silver blade runs through Lucian's red blade until the end, but due to the current boost in Lucian's senses, he sees everything in slow motion and grabs on the ghost lady's grip before she flies away from him to attack again. Got you. He smiles as he holds the cursed sword steady with his left hand. The sword trembles as it tries to escape Lucian's hand. He feels cold energy coming from her. That energy brings the feelings that L.U.S.T mentioned earlier. Anger, sadness, regret, and other bad feelings. Lucian is shocked that a sword has feelings, but well, he has a weapon that has a soul, so anything is possible. When thinking about that, he loses focus for less than a second, long enough for the ghost lady to start using her energy to stir the lake below them. An explosion of water wets Lucian again, but despite pushing him with a significant force, that water cannot hurt him. Is that the best you can do? Lucian asks the ghost lady, not to mock her but curious about her powers. He feels the sword tremble even more furiously in his hand. She seems to understand what I say. He comments to L.U.S.T. I don't know if she understands, but she can certainly feel the intent of your words just like Oya did before she got a demi.human body. L.U.S.T responds. Lucian can't help but have a strange thought when L.U.S.T compares the sword to Oya. He wonders if it's possible to give the sword a body using Envy's copy ability and thus have a sword wife. What am I thinking? Lucian shakes his head when he realizes that his thoughts are bizarre. He doesn't even know what exactly is a cursed sword yet and is already trying to make her his wife. That is too ambitious even for him. Without wasting time, he begins to focus his original demonic energy on the ghost lady. Using Envy's energy on her would just add another bad feeling to that whirlwind of sorrow. Lucian prepares to feel some resistance from the ghost lady, but surprisingly, the sword accepts his energy without complaint. In fact, 
He feels the blade suck his energy as when his wives suck his C.O.C.K to the maximum, wanting as much as he can give to them. Before he can ask, L.U.S. T explains. You also felt the emotions that come from this blade. She's been feeling so bad, so when she felt your pleasant and warm energy, there was no way she wouldn't want that. Lucian makes a confused expression as he feels the sword become calmer and calmer in his hand as she eagerly sucks the energy he gives her. So, I'm pleasing the sword, right? When it comes to you, I don't doubt that you can even please lifeless rocks on the ground, let alone cursed creatures. L.U.S.T materializes her body in front of Lucian and kisses him. Lucian looks at the sword as he asks L.U.S.T. what is she really? L.U.S.T quickly explains. Cursed objects can be created in many ways. They are really mysterious creatures. However, the most common is when someone tries to infuse a soul into an object, especially trying to make soul weapons. Like Eileen's Naginata. He asks. She nods. Exactly. However, dragons are creatures with extraordinary souls. They have a deep connection with soul dimension, and therefore royal dragons with really powerful souls can transform their souls into weapons. Then she looks at the sword with a sorry expression. But it's not because someone can do something that everyone can do too. Many try to turn souls into soul weapons, especially when the person doesn't accept that loss. And so, without knowledge of the soul dimension, soul's powers, and especially that soul being weak, the weapon does not become a soul weapon, but a cursed weapon. She continues to explain. Instead of that soul empowering the weapon, they use their most intense feelings to take control of the weapon. So, these cursed weapons, controlled mostly by bad feelings, try to destroy everything around them and themselves. Lucian looks at the calm ghost lady in his hand. He is really shocked by her change in attitude. A minute ago, she was attacking him madly, and now it looks like a docile kitten. Then he looks at L.U.S.T with a thoughtful expression. Wait. You said that these cursed weapons will always try to destroy everything around them and themselves. Yes. L.U.S.T nods. But you said I could tame her, Lucian speaks. And I was right, wasn't I? She points to the blade in his hand. Has anyone done that before? He asks. I don't think so. But many have already died trying. She responds. Lucian again makes a confused expression. But before he asks anything, she explains. I didn't lie to you. Although nobody did it, I knew you could do it. She smiles and begins to kiss his lips quickly. Your energy is the most pleasurable thing there is. This energy is just like that because of you, and I know you can use it to please anything in this universe, let alone a female soul that has only felt bad emotions for a while. He can't help but smile. You overestimate me. She shakes her head. I don't think so. Whenever I expect something challenging from you, you surprise me by doing something even more incredible. Your capabilities of pleasing have no limits. Lucian kisses L.U.S.T again before focusing on the ghost lady. The silver blade remains calm in his hand, and although he doesn't feel a connection with her, it is evident that she is enjoying his demonic energy. Will she always behave like that? He asks L.U.S.T. Think of her as a pet, or rather, a companion if you want to. If you feed her and pleases her, there's no reason for her to behave badly, right? L.U.S.T explains. Um. Lucian still fears that the ghost lady will lose control and hurt some of his wives. L.U.S.T makes a thoughtful expression. Well, probably no one has ever mastered a cursed weapon, so this is the first time. We'd better be careful, but if it works out, she might be an excellent companion. Think about your wives. They don't have soul weapons yet, right? This sword can protect them in close combat, especially the mage girls. Angela, Marie, and Lena have water affinity, 
so I'm sure Ghost Lady would be a good partner for them in combat. L.U.S.T knows about Lucian's concerns, so she quickly suggests. You can keep the sword by your side for how much time we need to be sure she will behave. You just stop giving her your demonic energy, and we analyze her behavior. Lucian has full confidence in restraining the ghost lady if he needs it, so trying to really tame she can work. And of course, if he manages to make that powerful sword that fights alone to protect his wives, that will be of great help during combats. He stops sending his demonic energy to the silver blade, and she immediately starts to tremble in his hand, asking for more of that pleasant energy. Do you want more? Only good girls get rewards. Lucian speaks fondly to the sword while feeling that it is quite strange. He doesn't exactly know what behavior he was expecting from the sword. Still, surprisingly, the ghost lady stops shaking as if she understood his intention and that behavior would not bring her more of his energy. Oh, she seems to have some intelligence after all. Lucian smiles at the blade and begins to stroke her hilt with his finger. Again, shocking him, the blade starts to gently vibrate in his hand, not showing any stress but as if she were feeling good with his C.R.S.S.S. See, she already understood that your touch is the best. L.U.S.T laughs while Lucian doesn't know how to feel about that strange situation. Oh, what about it? He asks while also stroking the words engraved on the ghost lady's blade. Hashtag 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 If you want to support me and read more than 150 chapters ahead, visit my Patreon. Patreon.com slash lament if you can also donate to my Kofi. KO.FI.com slash lament if any donation helps me a lot and allows me to continue writing. Chapter 347 Adeline's Dedication You Are Listening at NovelFull.Audio Chapter 347 Adeline's Dedication L.U.S.T Read the words on the Ghost Lady Blade aloud. More than friends, we are sisters of different parents, inseparable in life and beyond. It looks like a tribute, Lucian comments as he continues to stroke the sword in his hand. L.U.S.T Mods Yes. It is written in the royal language of the oceans. It is just a pretentious way of saying that it is the coded language of the blue star, the second world of the seven stars. Lucian makes a thoughtful expression. It's hard to believe it is a coincidence that this sword is too near where Adeline came to hide. Does the blue star have any special connection to her homeworld? All the seven stars have many connections. They are very close together in order to defend themselves against superior races. But in fact, some of them have more significant connections. L.U.S.T starts to explain. The blue star and brown star are very similar in general power, but their special connection comes from the friendship between the royal families of the Fox. People and the Blue Star Mermaids clan. She continues. The brown star fox. People are kind souls who defend nature at any cost, so they easily make friends with other people who respect nature. The mermaids are kind and peaceful beings of the blue star, and that is why they are seen as weak and fragile by other peoples. But the fox. People defend the mermaids, and that's why they get along so well. She ends a quick explanation about the relationship of those peoples. Lucian looks at the ghost lady and thinks out loud. So this could be a gift from a mermaid to a fox. Woman. Or from a fox. Woman to a mermaid. But the first option is more likely because this blade seems to have been made with water energy, the main affinity of the mermaids. L.U.S.T responds. He continues to stroke the ghost lady's hilt and blade. Those words. It is obvious that they loved each other very much, but the ending suggests something dangerous. L.U.S.T nods. A promise for life and beyond. It is possible that one of them died and the other did not accept the death of her beloved sister, so she tried to immortalize her soul in this sword. But without knowledge and soul power, the result was a cursed sword. 
Lucian makes a sorry expression while looking at the ghost lady. Maybe Adeline was her fox dot woman and her sister the mermaid. Maybe. L.U.S.T thinks about something. Oh, let's read the diary. I know you were curious about it, but you didn't want to stay so near your mother. In law, at the risk of seducing her unintentionally. He makes a can't be helped expression and then takes the magic bracelet and tosses it to L.U.S.T. She takes the bracelet and takes the diary out of it. Then she lay her back on Lucian C.H.E.S.T so they can both read the diary while he continues to stroke the ghost lady to make her docile. With Lucian's incredible reading capability, he can quickly read the diary pages while L.U.S.T decodes the codes. On the next ten pages after the first one, Adeline only wrote things that happened in her daily life as she joined the Fox Villages to create a great clan. She described her interactions with new people, and although everyone thought she was a goddess because of the difference in power, she acted humble with others as she understands that people from inferior worlds don't have abundant resources to become stronger as inheritances of power, knowledge, and treasures like mystic crystals. Lucian continues to read the diary, but at no point, Adeline talks about her power level. Yet, in the codes hidden between the simple words, she says that due to some limitations caused by injuries she suffered during her escape from the Brow Star, she fears meeting a lot of mortal realm enemies. She should be on the Earth realm or peak of the mortal realm because even people from sky and immortal realms severely injured can beat hundreds of people from the mortal realm. L.U.S.T explains. I see. He continues to read Adeline's diary. Five pages later, they find something interesting in the codes that Adeline wrote. Dovico L.U.S.T reads Adeline's words aloud. I dreamed about her yesterday. Lucian and L.U.S.T are curious about who Adeline was talking about, and so she continues to read the words in the diary. She told me to keep the sword away from them. They can't help thinking that Adeline's words are about the ghost lady, so L.U.S.T keeps reading. And I'm doing it. I devoted my life to be the guardian of that cursed blade. I know they can't bring the two swords together, or our worlds will be lost. I know my duty, and I did it well. L.U.S.T finishes reading that part and stops to reflect. Two swords. So is there another cursed blade? L.U.S.T thinks out loud. Perhaps the other sister also died. Adelina was not her but the keeper of one of the swords. Lucian comments. L.U.S.T nods. It makes sense, but I never heard of cursed weapons working together. Cursed objects are always untouchable and chaotic. Lucian looks at Ghost Lady in his hand. The silver blade looks like a baby sleeping comfortably. Well, if we can do something like that, other people should, too. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same way as ours. True. L.U.S.T nods and continues to read Adeline's codes. Knowing that it was too dangerous to go to another medium world, I fled to a distant inferior world and sealed the portal with an unstable life crystal, so there is no way for them to follow me through the portal. Also, I hid the blade in a deep lake. That poor soul quickly corrupted the place so the inhabitants of this world will avoid going to such a dark place, even if they are looking for their death. What is an unstable life crystal? Lucian asks. L.U.S.T quickly explains. It is a crystal modified by a great alchemist using thousands of other crystals. That is used to create a new. She pauses for a second while noticing something, making Lucian curious. Then she smiles and speaks. A new mine. Lucian quickly realizes the coincidence and comments. So that mine of life crystals. L.U.S.T nods. These unstable crystals are, as the name says, unpredictable. They may or may not work, and they can take from a few years to hundreds or thousands of years to work. That explains why no one found that mine before. Lucian talks about the life crystals mine in the ocean east of Port Green. 
and that's because the angels only found out about it recently. They must have been scanning worlds nearby and felt the mind's aura growing. L.U.S.T completes. An incredible coincidence indeed. So an ancestor of and created that mind to seal the portal and hide you here. Lucian talks to the ghost lady. A risky plan. L.U.S.T comments and then explain. The unstable crystal prevented others from using or tracking that portal, but soon it could become a great mine and draw the attention of powerful people to this world. Someone at some point would find this sword. Lucian responds. Adelina wrote that she got hurt while escaping, so maybe she had no choice. The unstable crystal must have been her last option. I guess so. L.U.S.T agrees. He again looks at the silver blade with a thoughtful expression. It seems that every step we give, we face something incredible in this world. What else should we expect? L.U.S.T also makes a thoughtful expression. There's probably a dark angel following us, but I'm still more concerned with Rose's mother. She is a vampire, and it would be a really improbable coincidence for her to flee to the same world as Adeline in very similar situations. Lucian can't help but agree with L.U.S.T. Yet, he quickly defends his lover. Rose would never hide something like that from me, especially something important even if it was a secret of her mother. I'm also sure that Rose wouldn't hide anything from you because she loves you very much. But maybe Rose doesn't know her mother's secrets. L.U.S.T responds. It's a possibility. Lucian makes a concerned expression. Both are silent as they reflect on new discoveries while Lucian continues to stroke the ghost lady and give her his demonic energy, which is slowly modifying the weapon in ways that no one could have predicted. So. Lucian pauses before looking at the silver blade again. Adeline dedicated her life to hide this sword. Maybe it is really dangerous to try to control such a cursed object. Also, we don't know what can happen if the ghost lady finds her sister. Adelina seemed to be very afraid of that as well as is be her pursuer's goal. Yes, there is no way to predict what will happen next. Also, keeping the ghost lady can make us a target of Adeline's pursuers if they are still looking for that sword. L.U.S.T agrees. But. Lucian asks. L.U.S.T smiles as she can't hide her thoughts from Lucian. They are deeply connected to the point that they think as one mind. Look at the ghost lady in your hand. L.U.S.T points to the sword. You already have full control over a cursed weapon. In case we find her sister, and the power of the two swords together is much greater, I am still sure that you can control them. Such treasures do not grow in trees, so we must take them when we can. Big rewards come with big risks. Before Lucian responds, L.U.S.T continues. Also, if we find Adeline's pursuers, it will be your luck, right? I know you already feel angry at them without even knowing them. I know you want to find out how the ghost lady and her sister died, find out who wanted to hurt those fox. Ladies, and punish them all just because they get in the way of your wives' ancestors. This is you. Someone who doesn't forgive those who do or try to harm your lovers, and their families, even if it happened hundreds or thousands of years ago. I really want to punish them. Lucian smiles. L.U.S.T smiles too. So keep the ghost lady with you, and after we rescue your mother, reunite your whole family, we go to Brow Star to find out who deserves to be punished. Also after recovering your real body. Lucian corrects the plan. She kisses him. Sounds perfect to me. Lucian finishes kissing L.U.S.T and turns the ghost lady in the air before looking at the blade. And you. Do you like this plan? L.U.S.T laughs, thinking that Lucian is expecting too much from the cursed sword. Ha ha ha. She's still a SW. But something incredible happens. Boom splash an explosion of water occurs in the lake below them, and a circle of water forms around Lucian, but without getting him wet. Also, 
he can see many stones shining within that circle, forming a beautiful scene. That sounds like a yes to me. Lucian chuckles. It certainly is. L.U.S.T giggles. The ghost lady vibrates excitedly in Lucian's hand, demonstrating her agreement. At the same time, dozens of miles above the lake, amidst dark clouds, a hooded figure watches the scene. Then a black feather slowly falls. And there's a drop of transparent liquid on it. Not a water drop. Hashtag 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 if you want to support me and read more than 150 chapters ahead, visit my Patreon. Patreon.com slash lament if you can also donate to my Kofi. KO.FI.com slash lament if any donation helps me a lot and allows me to continue writing. Chapter 348 Lucian's Flowers January 2nd You are listening at NovelFull.Audio Chapter 348 Lucian's Flowers One Half While Lucian has a great time with his new sword, his wives walk through the forest searching for a specific field of flowers. The place has rare flowers due to the strange atmosphere around the Lake of Tears, and almost nobody goes there for fear of the ghost lady. Has Hubby found the gems yet? Marie thinks out loud. He usually does everything very quickly. He can do many important things slowly. Sometimes very slowly. Maggie comments with a flushed expression. He he he. The other girls giggles while also blushing. You have no idea what they're talking about, right? You just let him use the tongue on you. Envy provokes Amelia mentally. Amelia snorts as she gets upset. Shut the f.u.c.k up. Oh, are you upset? Look around, these women are probably carrying his children, but what about you? If you don't take what you want, we will be wasting our potential. Envy explains. Amelia looks at Lucian's wives, talking and laughing. She really feels that they don't are jealous of her as much as at first because while they have all the love that Lucian can give them, she is still limiting herself and depending only on the energy of his pats and not generating energy beside him as she wants. I can. I can really do it. Amelia mumbles as she thinks to herself. So do it. Envy speaks. I go. Amelia exclaims. I'm going to have his children. Dot. Lucian's wives stop when they hear Amelia exclaim in a loud tone. They look at her with confused expressions. Dot. Amelia realizes that the girls can't understand why she said that because she was talking to Envy mentally, so she gets embarrassed. But the girls actually understand Amelia's situation. Any of them is sure that even if they were Lucian's sisters, they would still fall in love with him. Angela smiles gently while tapping Amelia's shoulder. Of course you can. Amelia smiles and hugs Angela. Despite feeling jealous of everyone around Lucian, she also likes his wives and feels like in a lovely family with them. Then the group continues talking and laughing through the forest. After walking another hundred meters, they arrive at the edge of the flower field. The place is a big clearing in the middle of the forest. Wow. Some girls comment together while they are all impressed by the beautiful field of flowers. The place seems to have more than 300 square meters of infinite varieties of flowers, also of different shapes and sizes. I feel a powerful magical aura here. Galana comments while her nature affinity allows her to notice the flower's aura. Galena, beside her daughter, makes a curious expression. She also has a nice nature affinity and is the strongest follower of Eve today, but she can't feel anything special coming from the flowers. Well, that is the difference between the potential of pride and L.U.S.T energies. While the first gives power quickly, the second improves all forms of the person to gain real power. It looks like someone nurtured this soil with magic seeds. Envy comments as she checks the flowers closest to the edge of the clearing. Magic Seeds 
Kara asks while she is interested in improving the Purple World plants to produce better meals for Lucian and the girls. Envy quickly explains. They are items used to plant special trees in a specific soil, making it richer and more likely to improve anything else planted on the site afterward. They are very rare because they are only taken from legendary trees that you only have in a few medium and superior worlds. Why would anyone plant such treasures here? Cassidy thinks out loud while the other girls have the same question in mind. Envy shrugs. I have no idea. Maybe whoever did this wanted this to be a special place. And comments. But so close to the Lake of Tears. Does this have anything to do with the ghost lady? Elsie makes a thoughtful expression. While some girls reflect on the subject, others start looking for the perfect flower for the offering among those beautiful flowers in the clearing. Jean walks among several light dot colored flowers, which do not attract her attention. Although she generally does not show interest in giving her opinion on serious matters, she wants to be more present in Lucian's life, not just as one of his beautiful wives, but as someone that he can always trust on. That's why she keeps looking for a flower with a darker color, but not so dark, because she likes to be an obedient wife, too. After a few minutes, she finds a solid pink flower with a long stem and green leaves. A beautiful tulip. That color resembles her hair, but also Eve's hair. Jean now understands that Lucian's reason for being interested in her was because of the similarity between her hair. But Jean is not sad. She can feel Lucian's feelings for her through their connection. He chose me as his wife, so I have nothing to worry about. Jean's eyes shine with expectation as she gently removes the tulip from the ground along with a significant amount of earth and puts it in a wood container designed to keep the flowers alive until the ceremony time. Arya, beside Jean, claps, and smiles. A beautiful flower with a solid color. Certainly hubby will like it. I hope so. Jean smiles too. Being in Lucian's group of wives is a perfect dream. She is very loved by her lover and has a kind family who also loves her. The best part is that she doesn't have to deal with her spoiled nephew. Also, Jean is already preparing for when she has children with Lucian, she doesn't let him spoil them so much that they will become bad people. On the other side of Arya, Ella also finds a flower that catches her eye. Oh, what do we have here? Ella asks as she opens her way among large green leaves. Arya can see a golden sparkle reflecting in her daughter's eyes even at night while Ella pushes the green leaves away, showing two beautiful golden sunflowers. Superb! Both mother and daughter Harpy exclaim with the same sparkle in their eyes. They are a couple, so I think they were waiting for you both. Jean comments while holding her tulip fondly. I also think so, Ella comments as she gently takes the two sunflowers off the ground. Arya quickly helps her daughter to separate the sunflowers into two containers, one for each one of them. Although the color of the sunflowers is golden, they're bright and not very light, which shows that they are kind and obedient wives at home but also brave warriors in combat. Also, the mother and daughter harpy pair wants to demonstrate how brilliant their love for Lucian is, like those sunflowers, which shine even at night. The flowers here are really magical, Ella comments while she and other girls gaze at her golden sunflower. But this is a dangerous place. People who get too close to the Lake of Tears don't usually come back home. Elsie comments, trying to make a mysterious tone as if telling a scary story. Still, the girls can't help but laugh, imagining Ghost Lady's encounter with Lucian. It will be good if the Ghost Lady doesn't join the family. Mia comments while looking for a flower. Indeed. The other girls comment while laughing. Less than a minute later, Maggie finds several similar flowers that catch her eye. Those flowers have tiny red circles in the middle and many small red petals with a yellow border around them, creating a ball of petals. Looking at the intense red of the petals adorned with small bright yellow stripes around them, Maggie remembers the flames of her fire magic and is sure that Lucian will also think like her. 
Maggie doesn't think twice before taking the most beautiful of those flowers and placing it in the container with a little soil. Nice fire marigold you got. Elsie gives Maggie a thumb up. Fire marigold. I really like this one. Maggie thinks to herself, satisfied with the color and appearance of that flower. There are so many rare flowers in that clearing that it is difficult for girls to choose one. Few of them have already found a special flower while the others continue to look for the best among the best. Scarlet, like Maggie, looks for a red flower, but she doesn't like the marigolds and keeps looking until she finds a lonely flower, totally scarlet red, very similar to her hair and fur. Carnation Scarlet thinks aloud while recognizing that flower because there was one in her grandmother's house where she lived when she was very young. Her grandmother said that the carnation is Scarlet's mom's favorite flower. Perhaps that flower would bring painful memories to Scarlet before, but now she just feels good knowing that her brother is fine and her mother has been avenged. There is no way for her to choose another flower after seeing the beautiful Scarlet carnation. She takes that flower to give Lucien a blessing that her mother would give them if she were alive. At the same time, Astrid also finds a beautiful lonely flower. That flower looks like a simple orchid, but its brown petals are strangely sharp. Pointed. Also, in the center of it, there is a part of the flower that looks like a stinger. Astrid smiles while swinging her tail. The pointed petals of that brown orchid resemble her bat. Wings, and the stinger in the center reminds her of her own manticore stinger, which has developed harder and more sharpened as she gets stronger. She takes the orchid off the ground and feels that the plant is very resistant and a little scary. Also, the not extremely dark color pleases her very much. Perfect. Every time one girl finds a flower of their like, the other girls get happy too. Yet, Amelia and Envy can't help but get more and more eager because they want to find the best flower to please Lucian more than anyone else. The girls who already found the special flower understood that it was the flower that chose them due to their special feelings, but Amelia and Envy see it as a game, one that they have to win, and quickly. I found you. Lena exclaims as she notices a beautiful blue flower shining in the middle of other flowers of that type, but only that one shines more than the others with a perfect solid lapis blue. Lena quickly approaches the flower but does not realize that Marie had also noticed that flower and also went towards it. Bam, A.H. Both sisters get surprised when they hit their foreheads as they bend down to pick up the bright blue flower. I saw it first. Both speak at the same time. The other girls stop to watch the dispute between Maria and Lena while Angela shakes her head. Everyone heard me talking when I found it. Lena argues as she looks at Kylie, asking for help. But I started moving toward it before you. I was just further away. Marie looks at Anne, also looking for a witness. But Kylie and Anne don't say anything because even though they know that Lucien finds the sisters' competition between Marie and Lena's healthy, they, like his other wives, don't want to get involved in that dispute now because this is a very special moment for them. Before Lena and Marie say anything else, Angela speaks in a firm but still gentle tone. Do not fight. Mom. Marie and Lena pout. Angela sighs. Lucien would be sad to see you fighting right now. There are so many of those blue flowers so just take another one. Lena and Marie bow their heads while they regret fighting so much. They know that Lucien doesn't like them to fight. But. Marie sadly whispers as she looks at that blue flower. This is the brightest one. Lena whispers too. Angela looks at that flower and is surprised as it is lovely. This is really a fantastic magnolia. This blue glow looks so mystic. Also, this shade of blue is perfect. Lena and Marie smile as they see Angela's impressed expression on realizing why they wanted that flower so badly. Then the sisters look at each other while thinking the same thing again. Dot, it's your, mom. Both Marie and Lena take a step back. Angela smiles. Oh, I won't refuse then. She bends down in front of the magnolia spot and gently removes that special one. 
But then, as she bows, Angela realizes that there are two other bright magnolias hidden in the middle of that natural flower bed. We are so lucky. She comments while the blue glow of the magnolias blends perfectly with the glow of her eyes and hair. Hashtag 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 if you want to support me and read more than 150 chapters ahead, visit my Patreon. Patreon.com slash lament if you can also donate to my Kofi. KO.FI.com slash lament if any donation helps me a lot and allows me to continue writing.